Welcome back to the Newark Museum of Arts Virtual Dino Fest as we continue to learn about dinosaurs by joining experts like those coming up next from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. We're offering a wide variety of programming today. After me and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences at 4 p.m., get ready to meet prehistoric animals in the modern world with eyes of the wild. We'll see live animals that trace their evolution over millions of years from dinosaurs and meet modern animals that live almost unchanged since. Bring your questions and prepare to be amazed. And then the only way to wrap up after a prehistoric, prehistoric day, sorry about that. After a prehistoric day, join us for five. Join us at five p.m. to six p.m. for a dino party, a dino puppet show, and dance party. Don't become a fossil. Join in and shake a tail feather with us. With imagine that. For more about today's events, visit our Facebook page. Register for the Zoom sessions using the links on the Facebook page or search Newark Museum Dino Fest. For all of you who are joining us via Zoom, please feel free to drop your questions um, in our chat feature located at the bottom of your screen. And if you are uh, having, if you're fielding questions from Facebook or you have questions from Facebook, feel free to drop those questions in our comment section and we will make, make sure that those questions get to our host. So to no further ado, thanks again for joining us today and please welcome Sam from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. How are you doing, Sam? I'm doing great. How are you all doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to have you with us. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So like Daryl said, I am joining you all from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. We are in our building in downtown Raleigh in North Carolina. Um, and behind the scenes, we're also joined with a couple of my fellow other educators, Laura Beth and Martha, who may be helping answer questions in chat. Um, now we are downtown Raleigh. We have two buildings in our museum for a total of seven floors of exhibits. But today we're gonna focus on one of our most popular exhibits in our museum. It's on our third floor. It's our dinosaur and paleontology hall, as you can probably tell from what is behind me right now. Um, and when we're looking in through our exhibits, I want you all to kind of focus on what you can see in the different exhibits that we'll be stopping at today. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, like we said, feel free to type them in chat and we'll uh, try to answer as many as possible today. So for our first specimen that I wanna talk about right here, um, does anyone want to guess what it might be? There's a big hint <laughs> right down here. Um, and it might also look familiar from some of the other panels that you went to today. Um, this one is our skull of our Tyrannosaurus Rex, one of our fan favorites. Um, what do you notice about this skull? What are some observations, some scientific observations we can make maybe about what we're seeing here or around? If you were thinking that this skull has really big, really sharp teeth, that is a great observation. So Tyrannosaurus rex, as you probably know, was a carnivore. It ate meat and its sharp pointy teeth kind of told us scientists that. Um, the really cool thing about Tyrannosaurus rex is that on both sides of the teeth, the front and the back, they had a serrated edge, kind of like a steak knife that would help cut into the meat that they were eating. You may have also noticed a really strong, really thick jaw back on, on the bottom here. Tyrannosaurus rex had a super, super strong bite force. So it could basically bite down with the same force as if you were to try to balance a car on top of a pencil. Um, and so it could bite down really, really strong and bite through bone. So that one is, is kind of what we can see from this. Another really cool thing that I wanted to show you was up here with the Tyr Tyrannosaurus Rex. And I have a prop to show you. Um, our Tyrannosaurus Rex had eyes the size of soccer balls. So if you can imagine a soccer ball eye right here, um, their eyes would have faced forward, just like us as humans have eyes that face forward. Um, it's a sign that they were a predator and they were looking for their prey out in the distance. Um, so again, if you can imagine those eyes looking for the predators or the prey out there. Um, and the final thing I want to show you is, do we think that I would make a good snack for a Tyrannosaurus? I feel like, I feel like I could. Not that I would want to meet a Tyrannosaurus Rex in real life. And it's a good thing that they went extinct about 70 million years ago, right? All right, so we are going to transition to our next exhibit. Um, as we're walking, we're going to turn off our camera. But if you have any questions, um, I can take one or two of them at, um, while, while we're traveling. All right, great. Do we have any questions in the chat? 
None at the moment. Um, all right, by great. All means, feel free to proceed. All right, wonderful. Great. And again, I do want to remind you all, you are more than welcome to drop your questions if you're watching via Facebook Live in our comment mm -hmm. section and or in our chat if you are watching via Zoom. Wonderful. All right. So we, when we moved from our Tyrannosaurus Rex, we are actually going backwards in time. We are going back to about 150 million years before the Tyrannosaurus Rex for this exhibit right here. Um, this is our Triassic period. It's the first era of the kind of three eras in the Mesozoic time when the dinosaurs were ruling the earth and the, the um, reptiles were kind of the, the most dominant species on earth. Um, so this one is our Triassic um, time. With this animal that we see here, do we notice any similarities or differences to that Tyrannosaurus rex skull that we just saw? Maybe you might notice, again, those teeth, do they look really sharp and pointy? Yeah, um, so this one, this uh, animal was also a carnivore. It also ate meat. So it has the similar type teeth um, to the Tyrannosaurus rex, but a little bit smaller because again, the skull is a little bit smaller. Um, the skull might look a very, very similar. Um, and because of these similarities, you might think that this is a dinosaur too, but actually, this one is a, a reptile called Prostosuchus. Um, it's more closely related to crocodiles, so it's not actually considered a dinosaur. They would have grown to be about 16 feet long, so about half of the distance of a school bus, um, but they would have been quite a large uh, crocodilian like reptile that was living again before the time, 150 million years before uh, the time of the Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, and that would be this animal right here. But again, you can tell it is a carnivore. It does eat meat because of those really sharp teeth that we see in its mouth. Um, this is actually an old um, depiction of the Postosuchus. Uh, Postosuchus we found actually don't have quite long of those front legs. They were actually a lot shorter. Um, so it probably would have walked on its uh, back legs most of the time, kind of like we walk on our two legs too. Um, so that one is this animal right here. All right, are we ready to see the next animal on our exhibit? Yeah, all right. And as we transition, there are a couple of questions that made their way into the chat. So we can answer Wonderful. those as we move along. Yeah, um, that'd be great. <laughs> we have a question in reference to the T-Rex. They wanna know how many T-Rex specimens are at your museum? How many T-Rex specimens do we have? We actually only have um, that one skull, and then we have a Tyrannosaurid in our other building that's a little bit smaller, um, probably was more like a like a, a juvenile or a teenager kind of um, dinosaur, that one. Um, so only only like one really complete one. And that low-key answered the second question because they wanted to know, was that a baby? I'm guessing the first oh. dinosaur that you, the T-Rex that you showed us in the beginning, was that a baby version of the T-Rex? No, that one would have been more of a full grown size um, okay. as far as the, yeah, as far as the Tyrannosaurus Rex goes. Um, and again, it's a little bit hard to tell because it was just the skull how big those dinosaurs would have been, but they could have grown to be about 40 feet long. So longer than the distance of a school bus and about two or 20 feet high or two stories. So like a two story building, they could have gotten really, really large. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get to more questions after you uh, go into this beautiful specimen right behind you. So we'll be yeah. on stage now. <laughs> All right, great. Um, all right, so again, with this animal, what do we see with this animal? What do we notice that might be a little bit different or the same as the two animals that we just saw in our exhibits? Give you a hint. If we look at the mouth, do we see those really, really sharp teeth? I don't know about you all, but I don't. I don't see those really sharp teeth. I see um, something that may look a little bit like a duck's bill almost. Um, so while we look at this skeleton and we might think that it could be in the theropod group, um, which is the same group that includes the Tyrannosaurus and the Velociraptor and things like that, um, this group of dinosaurs is actually called the Hadrosaurs. Um, they're what we call the duck-billed dinosaurs. And you can see that from this skeleton um, and the skull, that duck bill um, that they're, they usually um, that they look like. Now it's a little bit misleading because even though it looks like it has a duck bill, these dinosaurs would have had hundreds 
to thousands of teeth in their mouth. Um, they just look a little different than those really the the really sharp pointy teeth. They're what we have. Um, they're what we call a dental battery, and they were like little teeth all in like one big chunk, essentially. But they but they would have had like hundreds. Like, we're talking like three hundred to four hundred up to like a thousand or so for the bigger um, hadrosaurs there. Um, now with these ones, this one is what we call an Amontosaurus. Um, they are herbivores, so their teeth are a little bit more flat because um, they crunch on plants. Um, and we have found hadrosaurs with shellfish also um, in their in their coprolites or their fossilized poop. Um, and so they weren't only limited to plants, um, but they did have, again, that, that mostly plant-based diet. Um, these ones were also really large dinosaurs. They could get to be about 35 feet long, um, this specific species, and about 10 feet high. So a little bit smaller than the, the Tyrannosaurus rex, but there are some species of hadrosaur that could have gotten larger than the Tyrannosaurus rex. And these are some of the most common dinosaurs that you find from the Cretaceous period. So around the same time as the Tyrannosaurus rex was alive, um, about like 65 to, um, or sorry, about 70 million years ago um, was when they were roaming around uh, like Western North America um, into Canada and, and Alaska and things like that. Um, but these these hadrosaurs, again, they, they would have been um, some of the most common animal or dinosaurs that you would have seen around that time. Um, they're also nicknamed the cows of the Cretaceous um, because they were so common. Um, and because they almost have little hooves as their front um, legs and again, plant eaters. So um, the other thing I wanted to point out was in our exhibit, we actually have um, a nest along with this hadrosaur, this Montessaurus. So um, with this nest, you can see the little baby um, hadrosaurus that are in there. Um, one of the baby's names, uh, this model is called Eddie, um, E-D-D-I-E. And uh, Eddie was actually stolen from our exhibit way back when we had a we had a dinosaur baby heist, um, but luckily the the people who took him from the exhibit returned him, so we have him back in the nest here. But hadrosaurs would have um, nested in groups like this, and um, they they would have they were found uh, around the nests with the eggs. All right, we're going to move to our next exhibit. Do we have any questions? We sure do. Um, our next question um, comes from one of our viewers and they wanna know how long do dinosaurs live for? How long do dinosaurs live for? That's a really great question. So it's, it's a little bit hard to tell for certain species. Um, we have been able to um, age uh, Tyrannosaurus rexes. Um, the oldest one that we know of was about 28 years old. Um, and so, and we're showing signs of like arthritis and other like um, of, uh, like the older um, uh, bone uh, conditions. And so, with that, uh, we know that like Tyrannosaurus rex at least could live to be about thirty years old or so. Um, but for a lot of the other dinosaurs, it's a little bit hard to tell. The way that uh, paleontologists or science scientists who study dinosaurs mm -hmm. um, tell the age of the dinosaur is by cutting almost like a slice of of bone and um, measuring growth rings in the bone, almost like a, like a tree. Um, and that's, that's how they can kind of tell the age of a dinosaur. Um, but that one. That's Speaking of trees and things that grow really big, this next question yeah. is in regards to the biggest dinosaur. What is considered the largest or biggest the dinosaur? The largest or biggest dinosaurs? Ooh, is it okay if I, if I delay that question sure, for an sure. exhibit we're gonna see in a few minutes? Sure, I'm sure our viewers won't mind. We can always skip over to one more question. All right, uh, cool, yeah. Have, uh, which dinos lay the biggest eggs? Where do dinosaurs lay the biggest eggs? Would probably be those those dinosaurs I'm, that we're going to talk about yeah, for the, okay, for the so, largest dinosaurs. Yeah, we'll hold yeah. On, so hold we'll hold on. so yeah, then what, so, we have another one. Uh, what time uh, frame or period uh, did the, um, they said this dinosaur, I'm not sure which dinosaur. Uh, the, I, I know you answered a lot of that in the uh, details when you were talking about the Triassic uh, period yeah. and then Jurassic period. So that might give them a time frame. But the two dinosaurs we've seen thus far, what? time frame would they have fallen in just to reiterate for our viewers yeah so again the tyrannosaurus rex and the hadrosaur the edmontosaurus the duckbill dinosaur um those would have been alive at the same time and in the same kind of region um those were about 70 million years ago so this is like right before um the the asteroid um struck earth um 
And then the Postosuchus, that crocodile-like um, animal that we, we saw, would have been alive way before that. So around like 220 million years ago um, was that. Yeah, so the Postosuchus was alive during the Triassic, what we call the Triassic time period. And then the um, Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Edmontosaurus was alive during what we call the Cretaceous time period. Um, and this next exhibit that we're going to actually look at is after the, um, the asteroid has hit the Earth. Um, it's of the Cenozoic time period. Um, and so for this one, we're actually going to get to go underwater and dive. So I hope you all brought your snorkels and your goggles um, to kind of see what life under the water was looking like after the dinosaurs went extinct. All right, I'm going to walk on through. Um, and the really cool animal that I want to point out here is an ancestor to our modern day whales. So if you've seen Finding Nemo and you can do a whale impression, you can say hello to this whale ancestor. This is what we call Zygoriza. Um, and if you look, it has those front flippers. Um, it kind of has some fearsome sharp teeth for catching some fish. Um, and in the back here, it does have remnants of back legs. So whales um, evolved from animals uh, that were on land and walked on, on four legs. Um, and so this uh, Zygoriza has the remainder of back legs that you can see. And in the distance in this mural, there is a large animal that you probably have heard of from popular media. If you've heard of the Megalodon, the giant shark, that was also living in the Cenozoic in the water. Um, this would have been one of the predators of these ancestors of whales. So we also had the Megalodon, the, the really large shark. Um, that recent, a recent article came out and said that it was about, there, there was findings that they're about 60 feet long. So that's a possibility. So that would be two, two school buses long, really, really long. All right. And we have emerged from the water, shaken ourselves off, um, still in the Cenozoic time period um, for this next animal that we're going to talk about. Um, and again, this is after the dinosaurs went extinct. Um, what do we notice about this animal? Again, going along the animals that we've seen so far, maybe if you notice, if you can see the teeth. Um, there's some interesting features around here. Um, if you notice, there's, there's giant claws that it could have been used to help help forage for food. Um, the teeth are a little flattened. Um, they're not as sharp and pointy like our Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, so this animal is an herbivore. It ate mostly plants. Um, and this is what we call a giant ground sloth, a giant ground sloth. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Ice Age, this is what Sid would have been here. Sid the sloth. Um, but this, uh, this giant ground sloth lived in the Cenozoic time period. Um, would have lived in about the areas that we are in, um, in Raleigh and possibly up into New Jersey where most of y'all are joining us from. Um, and these ones, these giant ground sloths would have, if we think of like the modern day sloths, uh, they evolved from these, these giant ground sloths, but the modern day sloths are a lot smaller, right? Um, go up in the trees, hang from them, sleep a lot of the time. Um, these sloths would have had to been a little bit more active because they were bigger, so they needed to eat more and, and find food. Um, with these giant ground sloths, they uh, probably wouldn't have been covered in as much hair as the, as the modern day sloths that we know of today um, because they would have overheated if they had that much first. They probably would have been more like an elephant almost um, with that same kind of leathery skin and very little hair. Um, and also, my favorite fun fact about the giant crown sloths um, is who here likes avocados? Because I love avocados. Um, if you ever had an avocado or guacamole, um, you can thank the giant ground sloth for that because these ones are the animals that were able to eat avocados whole and swallow those giant pits. Um, and transport them and plant other avocado trees. So because of the giant ground sloth, we have avocados. Now, when the giant ground sloth went extinct, avocados almost went extinct too, but the giant ground sloth lived at the same time as humans did and humans loved avocados as well. So they saved the avocados. So 
thank the giant ground sloth for the avocados and the humans for saving them. And you can have tasty avocados on your toast in the morning now. All right, we're gonna head to our final exhibit next. Do we have any other questions? We sure do. Um, we have a question in regards to the Megalodon. Um, they wanted okay. to know whether or not the Megalodon was considered a dino. Oh, that's a great question. So with our dinosaurs, um, the thing that makes a dinosaur a dinosaur is that uh, it's a specific like hip placement and the legs are underneath them. And dinosaurs spent most of their time on land. So usually we go by, again, it's not all the case for all of them, but usually we say that if, a, if an animal spends most of its time in water or flying, it's not a dinosaur. So Megalodon was not a dinosaur. It um, was around after the dinosaurs went extinct. It's a type of fish. Short answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> uh, very closely related to the uh, great white shark. So it probably would have looked very similar to that. Okay. Um, one uh, of our viewers wanted to know, was there a specific diet that the Megalodon uh, eat uh, and as well as the other uh, amphibian that you showed us were their diets that uh, what did their diets consist of? Yeah, so they mostly um, would have consisted. Okay, so the the postosuchus that crocodilian like um, reptile would have probably eaten anything from like fish in the water to also catching things on land. So they could have eaten um, small mammals that were around. Well, early mammals that were around during that time and also small dinosaurs that were around during that time. Um, for the Megalodon, the Megalodon could have eaten fish but most likely would have spent, it most, it spent most of its time um, hunting down those whale ancestors. Um, and in fact, when the Megalodon went extinct, um, that's when the whales could like flourish and become some of the biggest animals we know today. So, which transitions really well into our last two animals that we're going to talk about. All right. um, can you all see the, this current animal right here? I'm going to tie it back to, um, tie it back to that question that you had earlier about our largest dinosaurs. Um, so this dinosaur right here is a part of what we call the sauropods. Um, you might have noticed it has a super, super long neck and a long, long tail. Um, these were our largest dinosaurs. Um, the ones that we know of that the specific largest dinosaur was a titanosaur, um, probably from South America, um, is the largest one that we've found so far. Um, they are the largest animals to have walked on land um, in Earth's history that we know of. However, there is an animal that is alive today that is larger than the largest sauropod that we know of. Does anyone know? Can anyone think? of an animal that might be larger than a sauropod like this. They swim in the water. We were just talking about them as, <laughs> as uh, um, we have, animals, but- We have some oh, responses. Have uh, there's, oh, a, nice. there's the blue well they're throwing out, the giraffe. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. There is a crocodile um, and the- Those are great guesses. You actually <laughs> said it in the first one. You got it in the first one. Whoever said blue whale. Blue whales are the largest animals <laughs> that we know of to be on Earth. So um, there are blue whales that are larger than the largest sauropods, but um, for the most part, these ones are the largest ones on land um, as, as far as that goes. Um, now this one that I'm standing right beside, I'll stand right beside its legs so you can kind of see just how small I am in comparison to these sauropods. Um, but this one is actually a small sauropod. This is Pleurostelis, and it is, a, a, as far as sauropods go, pretty small. Um, and so with these ones, again, super, super long neck. Um, you can kind of make your own sauropod impression with your arm in your hand. They would have had that long neck with the head at the very top to reach uh, the tops of trees and eat the leaves off of the tops of those trees that none of the other dinosaurs could reach, right? Um, kind of like giraffes do today with their super long necks, right? Um, they have those four almost elephant-like legs um, and that long tail that they would have used to help balance and also in defense um, as well. Um, and so we've got that one. And uh, I do wanna show you the size of one of its footprints. So we have an example here of uh, the Pleurocelis's footprint and I'm standing in it right now. So I think about seven of me could maybe fit inside this one giant footprint. Um, for that pleurocelis. 
there. So quite large animals there. All right, now I, I mentioned that they use their tails for defense. And I wanna show you an animal that they might have been trying to defend against for our last animal that we're talking about today. All right. We've got to move back a little bit so that we can see the entirety of this one. <laughs> All right, can you see this wonderful creature behind me now? Um, so this is, uh, if you are like me when I first saw this dinosaur, you might be thinking, wow, this is such a really cool, really big Tyrannosaurus Rex, right? And you wouldn't be too far off. Um, this is from the same family as the Tyrannosaurus rexes, um, but this is about uh, seven, no, yeah, yeah, about 70, uh, 50 to 70 million years before the Tyrannosaurus rex. So this is what we call the Acrocanthosaurus, um, and it was alive in the early Cretaceous, um, so same time period as when the Tyrannosaurus rex was alive, but the Tyrannosaurus rex was at the end of the Cretaceous. Um, and it's in the same family. It's in what we call the theropods. Um, so it has it's the, the two-legged meat-eating dinosaurs, which you might have noticed, again, the teeth are very, very sharp, just like the Tyrannosaurus rex. But if you look at the jaw, you might notice that it's a little bit skinnier. Um, this dinosaur wouldn't have been crunching through bone like the Tyrannosaurus rex could. Um, and it would have probably been going after more like sauropods um, with, with the hunting um, strategies that it had. Uh, if you look, you might see the um, three uh, claws on the on the finger or three fingers on the hands. Um, Tyrannosaurus rex only had two um, in comparison, so we got those. This is what we call the Acrocanthosaurus, which is a very very big word that basically means high spined lizard. So if you look at the spine of this Acrocanthosaurus. You'll be able to see that there are there's bone that kind of sticks up in like a ridge over the Acrocanthosaurus, and scientists think that it would have had that, that high spine, that that ridge running along its back. Um, if you've ever heard of the Spinosaurus, Spinosaurus also had a very large uh, sail or ridge, um, would have been bigger than this one, um, but that that would be another dinosaur that had a very similar um, back to this one. Um, now the Acrocanthosaurus. Um, again, was alive about 50 million years before the Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, and this one right here, this specimen is named Fran. Um, and this is the most complete uh, Acrocanthosaurus skeleton that we have in the world. Um, and you all get to see it today. But this one is, uh, was found in Oklahoma. Um, but it is in this exhibit called the Terror of the South because we think it would have roamed um, the southeastern United States, possibly up into New Jersey as well um, when it was alive. Um, and with this Acrocanthosaurus, um, again, carnivore, um, is, it ate meat um, and would have hunted animals like the Pleurocelis, um, which is why they're both in this exhibit together. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to point out was if you look at the, uh, the spine of this Acrocanthosaurus, you might notice over the pelvis that some of the spine is fused together. Um, so this specimen in particular had an injury um, that you can kind of see um, from that fused spine. Um, it survived the injury. Um, it happened when it was alive and it actually healed um, so that the spine is fused together. So it probably had some reduced movement um, but it survived that, um, and it's a really cool thing that the fossil record can show us for this one specimen. All right. Oh, and I did have a, an Acrocanthosaurus uh, vertebra here, so you can see kind of how big it is in comparison to me if I were a little bit closer to this specimen here. All right, so that is all that I have to show for you today. Do you have any questions about yeah. There are a few questions um, related right. to what you're, where you're currently at. So one yeah. of the questions comes from our viewers and they wanna know, um, are giraffes related to the seropods? Oh, that's a great question. So giraffes are um, mammals. So they, um, their relatives were um, alive kind of during the Cenozoic time period with those giant ground sloths when that giant ground sloth lived. Um, but they're related to mammals and these dinosaurs are reptiles. So, um, 
kind of born the family of, you know, the crocodiles and the turtles and, and snakes and things like that. So giraffes would have been more like, you know, the mammals that, that you see today, like cats and dogs and, and things like that. So they're in two different groups. But that's a great question. <laughs> All right. And there is another question in regards to uh, the current dinosaur you're standing right in front of. They wanted to know mm -hmm. how much do they eat and how often. I guess that question could technically be applied to either or. So maybe answer both because I'm sure they, uh, they would love to know. <laughs> For the two, the two, the sauropod versus the acrocanthosaurus? Yes. That's a really great question. Um, so the sauropod, again, is a plant eater, um, but when they're growing, they could grow, um, again, they, uh, when we said they were the, the biggest animal, I did forget to mention, um, you also had the question for who had the biggest eggs. Um, mm. So the sauropods also would have had really large eggs. They're about the size of soccer balls, um, too. Um, but when the sauropods were growing, they could eat so much, they could gain 32 pounds per day. So they, they were eating a lot, a lot of food um, to grow very fast. Um, now for the Acrocanthosaurus, they probably didn't need to eat quite as much. Um, they would have probably more hunted down big prey like the sauropods and eaten a lot at one time. And that would have lasted them a pretty long time. Um, so they're, they're, they had a different kind of feeding strategy than the sauropods did. So one of our viewers loves the idea that these dinosaurs may have traveled and landed in New Jersey at some point amongst their travels. They also yeah. to know, have you all ever considered doing a tour of where the dinos traveled? Oh, that's a really good question. I would love to follow some of like the trackways and things like that for the dinosaurs. I haven't considered that, but that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because that would have been really cool. I mean, so the thing is, again, with the these dinosaurs that we find, we found Acrocanthosaurus in Maryland. Um, we found them in Oklahoma and so, some of those areas. And so because of that, paleontologists have um, assumed, made a hypothesis that they were alive all around the, the Southeast and kind of into the Midwest kind of area, but they could have gone um, along the Atlantic coast as well. So yeah, that would be really cool to like, you know, tour around where they could have been. I would I would be there for it. Um, there's another question from uh, Ellie in our chat. Ellie wants to know um, the they were just wondering if the 1938 movie Bringing Up Baby was filmed in that museum. And I'm not sure if you know or not because it's obviously past both of our time. Yeah, <laughs> our time yeah, yeah. Life, but, I, was gonna um, say, I don't I don't think so. That's a good question. I don't believe so because we didn't have this building in 1936. Um, we were in a different building back okay. then so so it would have looked a lot different but i'm not sure that's a great question something to research for all of us yeah uh, i, know. <laughs> I have know. another question from shelly shelly wants to know um that they've been hearing more and more scientists uh come to the thought process that most dinosaurs have feathers uh do you think that that is true um and and if so why yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I do believe that is true. Um, we have found a lot of, um, specifically the ones in this group, the theropods. Um, so like, again, the Velociraptors, um, the Tyrannosaurus, well, not quite the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but dinosaurs in that family. Um, and like Archaeopteryx um, that had feathers and things like that too. Um, feathers would have been a really great uh, method of camouflage, so blending into the environment. It would have been really great to um, to kind of uh, to keep the dinosaur warm um, and a really good for a defense mechanism for it. If another dinosaur was like trying to bite at them, um, they could just get a mouthful of feathers instead of biting their skin or anything like that. So I do definitely believe that that um, a lot of the dinosaurs in this group had feathers, um, and they haven't found. To my knowledge, they haven't found a specimen of Tyrannosaurus rex that has feathers necessarily, um, but a lot of the Tyrannosaurus rex cousins and like family members um, that are in the same group have had, uh, have been found with feathers. So we do believe that, that, that Tyrannosaurus rex also had some feathers, um, they just don't preserve as well in fossils. Um, yeah. uh, one of our viewers wanted to know which dinosaurs were found first? Um, so the first dinosaur that we call a dinosaur, um, the name, again, uh, the, <laughs> the terrible lizard um, dinosaur, um, was the guanodon. It was found in the 1840s uh, by Sir Richard Owen. He was a British paleontologist. Um, but if you think about it, people have been finding dinosaur bones since people have been on Earth. Um, so if you consider, like, the dinosaur myths, um, a lot of, of people may think that that... that um, 
people way back in ancient times were finding, let's say like a Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton, but they didn't know how to explain it. Um, and so they explained it using those, those myths like dragons and maybe griffins and things like that. And um, like cyclopses and things like that could have been um, from these prehistoric animals as well. We just didn't call them by the name dinosaur back then. So I see a couple of viewers are asking, are we going to draw dinosaurs? And I have the answer for that. I mean, not in this yeah. session. Um, however, uh, if you stay tuned, our dino party is going to be filled with different activities where you will be able to uh, engage and create and possibly interact with uh, dinosaurs via puppets and or some of the uh, dinosaurs you might make on your own, uh, on your, in your own space. So just stay tuned. After this program, there will be uh, opportunities for you to be able to create some dinosaurs of your own. Um, we do have that another question in regards to the dinosaurs you're standing with now. Um, mm -hmm. They wanted to know, our viewers wanted to know, uh, uh, roughly about how many eggs uh, can they lay at one time, uh, each, each dinosaur? How, uh, roughly about how many eggs are they able to lay? That's a great question. Um, so as far as uh, these two dinosaurs go, um, with sauropods, it's a little bit harder. I, I don't know if we found any like nests specifically, um, but uh, the scientists estimate about a dozen, so about 12 or so eggs um, as, as far as that goes. Um, and, and I think that applies to like both of them. Um, some could have laid more, uh, but for the most part, again, if with your sauropod and each egg is like the size of a soccer ball, um, well, like the 12 is a lot, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this next one may be a little tricky because I guess it depends on what period of the dinosaur phase they may be referring to. <laughs> However, they wanted to know which dino was the top of the food chain. So I know that might vary oh. depending on which period you're in, but it, yeah, <laughs> it definitely varies. Okay, so not only the, the time period vary, but also the, uh, the region of Earth also varies. So I mentioned the Spinosaurus. Um, those ones were found, those specimens are found in Africa. Um, and so they were kind of the top of the, the, the food chain in Africa. Um, it, the Tyrannosaurus rex at the end of the Cretaceous was pretty, pretty high up there as, you know, tyrant lizard king, as the, as the name implies um, to the top. Um, when the Acro was alive, um, the Acro would have been one of those those top tier predators as well. And again, if we were, if we were talking about like not dinosaurs, when we when we go into the Cenozoic, when the the again the giant ground sloths and the, when the dinosaurs went extinct, we had those top predators in the water. Those megalodon um, would have also been those those uh, the predators of the ocean. Um, that would have been those top predators. Nice. Yeah, but I mean, if you pick a time period and you pick <laughs> like a region, they they would have had. There were a lot of dinosaurs that were you know considered to be top of the food chain um, <laughs> for, for that. But uh, mostly the ones that, again, would have been the meat eaters, the two-legged theropods um, generally were, were considered the more of the, the upper levels. OK, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question in regards to the dinosaur you're standing in front of. So I know earlier mm -hmm. you mentioned that they were the cousins to the T-Rex. And this question yes. comes from one of our viewers in regards to which one was bigger, the one behind you or the T-Rex dinosaur? That's a great question. So the Tyrannosaurus Rex was bigger um, than this dinosaur. This one is probably considered the largest um, of the Afrocanthosauruses that were found. Um, and this one uh, probably is only about 15 feet as opposed to like Tyrannosaurus Rex can get to like 20 feet or so. Um, so yeah, Tyrannosaurus Rex was definitely uh, larger than that. Now would that be the same for the sauropods that was that's directly across as well? Would the T Rex be bigger than that, or the sauropods? No, the sauropods would have probably been larger than T Rex. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these ones. I mean, again, uh, Pleurocelis was a small one, um, but if you're talking about like you know a Patasaurus, Brachiosaurus, those those other sauropods, those ones would have been larger than T Rex. Those ones could get almost like. 60 to 70 feet long, which is almost two times the length of T-Rex, so yeah. So this yeah. question comes from Emily. Emily wants to know, were there any live births or were they only just uh, egg births? As far as dinosaurs go, mm -hmm. that is a great question. I don't know in particular if we have actually been able to find that in the fossil record. Um, so with fossils, um, only certain things are able to be preserved. Um, for instance, it's very rare to find eggs 
and uh, baby dinosaurs, uh, be just because the fossilization process involves a lot of pressure, um, which eggshells are very delicate and they break and things like that. Um, so you have to have very specific conditions to find um, those specific fossils, like, like baby dinosaurs and eggs and things like that. Um, so in the fossil record, we haven't been able to find an example of a live birth. So that's a really great question. I mean, it's something that we may be able to find in the future. That's the good thing about paleontology. It happened millions of years ago, but we're still finding new discoveries every day. Our viewers are coming up with amazing questions. Uh, there are a few yeah. more here before we wrap everything up. Um, yeah, I was going to say, we have time. <laughs> there's a question in regards to, um, were there any, uh, oops, sorry, I just rolled by it. Uh, were there any uh, dinosaurs that were similar to a cat? Were there are any dinosaurs that maybe evolved, that cats evolved from, um, is the question. That's a great question. So there were dinosaurs around that were the size of cats. Um, if we think like Archaeopteryx or like some of the other smaller um, theropods like like um, in the same family as the Acrocanthosaurus. Um, but again, cats are mammals, so they would have had different ancestors than the dinosaurs would have. They're kind of two different separate groups. Um, but we definitely had dinosaurs that were the size of cats um that were you know running around um during the prehistoric era and there were mammals that were alive when the dinosaurs were alive that would have been small um kind of like those cats um the the mammals didn't get to really start growing to be the size that we have them today until the dinosaurs went extinct so yeah great this, question this next question is regards we talked about the largest dinosaur they want to know what is the smallest dinosaur that's not a bird the smallest dinosaur that's not a bird. That is a really great distinction because <laughs> um, if you if you know dinosaurs, you know that birds are our living dinosaurs. So they were the they were the dinosaurs that came. Uh, they evolved from these theropod dinosaurs, um, and they survived the mass extinction. So if you look outside your window um, and you see a bird flying around, you're actually looking at a dinosaur. Um, if you go to your favorite chicken restaurant and eat some chicken, you're eating a dinosaur. Um, so that one's really cool. Um, but um, another, a, a small dinosaur that would not be a bird um, would probably be like the micro raptor. Um, the, the micro raptor, it was, yeah, it was you know, about like a foot and a half or so. Okay. Yeah, but if, if you're talking about dinosaurs that are still alive today, the bee hummingbird would be the smallest dinosaur that, that's still alive today. It's only about two inches, so yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, this one, next question is in regards to, uh, so why do you, if you, if you have knowledge of this, why do you think that uh, the term dinosaurs were used to name or classify these groups of animals um, and not another word to classify uh, dinos? That's a great question. So again, going back to Sir Richard Owen finding that first um, dinosaur skeleton, um, it was an iguanodon, which to him looked like a giant lizard. Um, and so they called them the terrible lizards or dinosaur um, to kind of uh, show, it's not terrible as in like bad, but terrible as in like awe-inspiring because um, they're so large. Um, and so that's why they, they, they kind of thought of the word dinosaur to be like awe-inspiring lizards. Um, though we know nowadays that, you know, dinosaurs weren't necessarily as closely related to lizards as they thought back then. Um, but that's through years and years of scientific research. So, yeah. Cool, cool. This next question is in regards to the T-Rex. They want to know, what can a T-Rex eat? And I'm going to imagine anything, but you're the expert, so <laughs> feel free to share. Yeah, yeah. Um, they would have gone after anything they could really catch. Um, their favorite meal was probably the Triceratops. If you've ever heard of the Triceratops, it's the, the two horns on the, the brow um, and the one horn on the nose, the three-horned dinosaur. Um, with that frill, they probably would have would have gone after that one. Um, again, they could crunch through bones, so they were probably really great at that. Um, but maybe ankylosaurs, um, which are the ones with like the clubs at the tip of their tail. Um, they had they were like our tank dinosaurs that had like the the really um, thick uh, uh, scales running down their backs. So T Rex mm -hmm. could crunch through those. Um, and also uh, that Edmontosaurus that we saw, the duck-billed dinosaurs, those hadrosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex would also be like, oh, that's a tasty snack. So yeah, they would have been going after those too. So yeah, the Tyrannosaurus rex basically would, would eat whatever it could catch. 
Um, probably would focus on the more large dinosaurs like the hadrosaurs, the triceratops, and the ankylosaurus. But. Okay. Um, this yeah. next question is in regards to the velociraptor. They want to know, mm -hmm. is the velociraptor the fastest dinosaur? Mm, that's a good question. I don't believe so. Um, now, velociraptors are a little bit different than they're depicted in the Jurassic Park movies. Um, in the Jurassic Park movies, they're like about the size of us humans. Um, but in, in real life, they were probably about the size of turkeys. Um, the fastest dinosaurs would have been in the group called the Ornithomimids. Um, they're, they almost look like ostriches, um, kind of with really long um, long necks um, and very long legs. Those ones would have been the ones that probably would have been reaching really fast speeds. We have a really cool question here from the chat. Um, this is in regards to the poop. <laughs> so hyenas, yeah. um, they're, they're making a comparison to contrast. Um, they're saying hyenas uh, excrement or poop um, is white because of all the bones that they eat, but the dinos yeah. have also had white poop as well. That's a really great question. Um, so what an animal eats uh, is, is, you can tell a lot by uh, what an animal eats by studying their, their poop, their feces. Um, and so um, as far as Tyrannosaurus rexes go, we know that they were able to eat bone um, because we found copper lights that were like, you know, two feet of, sorry, I say copper lights again, those are the fossilized poop. Um, so we found those that are about two feet long that have bone in them. Um, and so just like a hyena would be. Um, so probably chances are, you know, when they were not fossilized, they would have been white with the bone as well. Um, through the fossilization process and the minerals that, that take the place of the bones, um, they're more like brownish, blackish colored nowadays. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell a lot from an animal based on um, their poop, their copper lights. So. That's, that's how we could tell that Tyrannosaurus rex could eat bones, like hyenas could eat bones. That's a great comparison. And hyenas also have a really strong bite force uh, for that same reason. Um, this question comes from our Facebook viewer. They wanna know, uh, are the baby eggs of dinosaurs big or really large? They can be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now the ones that are preserved um, are probably only about, uh, maybe about like this size, know, like a foot long or so. Um, the biggest one I think that we, we have found is about the size of like a basketball um, that has been actually preserved. So, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. How many Again, those are, in, those are in extreme circumstances, like, you know, if uh, it, uh, very well preserved fossils, those are the, the, how we found them. <laughs> so this next question, they want to know how many kinds of dinosaurs can swim? And I'm sure that may be a lot. So I guess we just go with the top three. <laughs> there are a lot. Um, as far as uh, like dinosaurs go, since most of them, again, spent their time on land, I mean, there are ones that the sauropods could definitely like walk in water and lakes and things like that. They were large enough. Um, the one that is coming to mind is again, that Spinosaurus um, that we mentioned with that high spine fin almost. Um, they had a body that was more shaped like a crocodile with a tail that was flattened. Um, and so scientists believe that it was using it like a paddle um, to help it swim. So it might've spent most of its time in the water um, with that body shape and that tail. Um, and that was actually, the, the first tail was just found this past April. Um, so again, paleontology uh, is finding new discoveries every single day. Um, so the scientists just found the, the complete uh, tail of the Spinosaurus um, this year. Um, but, but for the most part, dinosaurs we're more adapted for walking on land um, and not necessarily swimming that well. Yeah, but great question. <laughs> uh, did any dinosaurs have hair? Um, I know we've said a lot that most did not, but were there any? Yeah, that? no. So the dinosaurs that we know of, um, there were some that had proto feathers, um, which are kind of, they look like hairs. They're very fine um, feathers, um, but there wasn't any dinosaur that has been found with hair. Um, most of them have scales, um, again, those the feathered dinosaurs, um, that kind of skin impression. Mm -hmm. uh, Hair is usually more of a mammal trait, so not in the reptile family. 
this next question is in regards to the T-Rex. Um, and I think I know the answer to this, but again, I want to ask the ex expert, um, would the T-Rex eat people? <laughs> would the T-Rex eat people? That's a great question. So in my opinion, I don't think it would be worth it for a Tyrannosaurus Rex to eat people because they were really large and probably looking for larger prey. Um, but I mean, technically, yes, it would be possible. Luckily, there were no people around when Tyrannosaurus Rex was roaming the earth, so we didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, 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 probably would have would have enjoyed a hadrosaur, a tasty hadrosaur, more duck-billed dinosaur, more tasty than a human. <laughs> yeah. uh, this question comes from Michael. Uh, which dinosaur would have been the smartest? The smartest dinosaur? That's a really good question. So in my opinion, dinosaurs have ruled for millions of years. So they're around uh, from like 240 to about uh, 70 million years ago. Um, and so they had to be doing something right to be living that long. Um, now I think the one with like the biggest brain to body ratio um, that was found is a dinosaur named Troodon. Um, and so that one is often considered to be a pretty smart dinosaur. But again, if you're around for millions of years, you've got to be pretty smart to be surviving um, <laughs> that long and ruling the earth. So I think most dinosaurs were pretty smart. <laughs> um, this other question, we've been so focused on meat eaters, but uh, this other yeah. question is in regard to the herbiv herbivores, the plant eaters. They want to yeah. know uh, what were the biggest uh, herbivore dinosaurs, and maybe we can go at the, the top three of those as well. Um, yeah, what, what yeah, yeah. So they would have all, the top three would have all been in the sauropod groups, so those long neck dinosaurs, uh, long, long neck, long tails. Um, they would have, again, eaten hundreds of pounds of food per day. Um, to grow again, if you can put on 32 pounds per day, you've got to be a pretty large dinosaur um, by the by the end of your growth cycle. Um, so again, the uh, the Titanosaur uh, groups would have been um, the really large one. Um, one of them that we know of is the uh, uh, Patago Titan, um, found in Patagonia in in South America. That one's one of one of the the largest um, herbivores. But again, those. Those sauropods, those long necked dinosaurs were the ones that could be really, really, really big. Mm -hmm. Great question. All right, well, we're coming to a close um, and the uh, questions seem to be sort of drying out in this moment. So um, right. what I wanna do is I just wanna just, again, leave you a few moments to sort of just uh, let our viewers know if they were interested in finding out more information about dinosaurs uh, and more information about your museum specifically, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, great. Um, so our museum uh, is, again, the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Um, it's If you wanted to go online, it's naturalsciences.org. Um, and our hashtag is also natural sciences if you wanted to learn um, more about that. We have, um, again, seven floors of exhibits. So not just dinosaurs. This is We, we mainly focused on our, our main dinosaur hall, but we also have a paleontology lab. Um, in our other building uh, where scientists actually work on getting bones out of the matrix that they're found in and things like that too. So um, if you want to check us out, you can, you can check out that. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us for this tour today. I hope you all learned something new and, and saw some really cool stuff. Yes, yes. We definitely want to thank you all for joining us today, with uh, especially joining us with you, the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, um, and for all of our viewers to learn more about their museum's exhibits and virtual education programs, visit North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences on Facebook um, and or go to their website, as uh, Sam mentioned. Be sure to join us, though, at 4 p.m. to meet prehistoric animals in the modern world with eyes of the wild. To watch anything you've missed from today's events, visit our Facebook page, register on Zoom sessions using the links on our Facebook page to search Newark Museum's Dino Fest. And make sure to mark your calendars for Saturday, October 10th to join us for our next community day called Game On. So for all of you gamers, it is gonna be a day filled with virtual events on art, technology, and gaming for the entire family. So uh, again, we would love for you all to join us on that as well. So all of our North Carolina viewers, including uh, uh, the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. By all means, join us for our game day. We are we would love to have you. Um, and uh, again, thank you all for watching. All of our viewers at home, we're signing off. I'm Daryl Dwayne, and this is Sam. And thank you. Thank you.